Hi, my name is Paul Song. I'm the CEO of NKGen Biotech. Uh, we are a clinical stage company um, providing innovative natural killer cell products uh, for advanced cancer and neurodegenerative diseases. Um, today, I wanted to share with you a little bit of the work that we are doing with uh, our uh, natural killer cells for um, neurodegenerative diseases, as well as the scientific rationale behind its use. Um, so uh, I just want to give you a little bit of background first on natural killer cells. Um, they're probably the most underappreciated cells in the human body. They represent about 5 to 20% of all the circulating lymphocytes, which are the white blood cells in our body. Um, for all the attention that has been placed on T cells, uh, as well as regulatory T cells, I think uh, we it is becoming clear that natural killer cells play uh, an equal role in overall regulation. But perhaps the biggest thing that natural killer cells can do is distinguish self from non-self. So those dangerous cells that are circulating within a, a human body, whether they be cancer cells, whether they be virally infected cells, or in many respects, some dead uh, tissue, natural killer cells have the ability through a whole array of receptors to distinguish self from non-self and help to eliminate these dangerous cells. Um, in fact, if you were to go back and look at the literature um, on the role of natural killer cells and look specifically at natural killer cell dysfunction, so either weak or decreased numbers of natural killer cells, you will find numerous publications uh, of uh, correlating weak natural killer cells with various diseases ranging from cancer to autoimmune diseases uh, to uh, some neurodegenerative diseases as well. So when we set out to establish our natural killer cell program, we were looking well beyond oncology to really look at the role that natural killer cells play across numerous disease paths. And in doing so, we wanted to create highly enhanced, highly active natural killer cells without any genetic modification that could be used to address not only oncology, but uh, all sorts of other uh, diseases as well. Uh, the challenge though of natural killer cells are they're very, very difficult to get to grow. Uh, most companies that are in this space have gone to a universal donor, whether it be a pluripotent stem cell or fetal derived cord blood as their source, because if they were to take 10 healthy volunteers, uh, isolate the natural killer cells and try to get them to grow, most companies can probably get 20 to 30% of all of their donors cells to successfully grow. So because of the lack of ability to get routine growth, that's why they've adopted a universal uh, source of cells. Uh, while that may make sense for an allergenic program for oncology, we felt that that would be problematic to treat non-cancerous conditions. So the first thing that our technology allows us to do is to get anyone's NK cells to grow, regardless of how heavily pretreated the donor is, how old the donor is, or how um, healthy the donor is, that if when we take 100 patients, we're able to get 100% natural killer cell growth. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I think a lot of companies don't talk about is taking a weak natural killer cell and making, making it inherently stronger and more um, active in its ability to recognize self from non-self. So not only can we get anyone's NK cells to grow, but we will show you how we can make them inherently more powerful and more in tune to find those cells that shouldn't be in our body. So the first thing um, uh, that we had to show the US FDA when we pr uh, presented them with our product was particularly in cancer patients that we could get blood from uh, natural, uh, natural killer cells from cancer patients to grow equally well as if we were to draw blood from healthy subjects. Uh, it would be a shame to enroll a patient, particularly an end-stage cancer patient into a trial only to be told some two to three weeks later that you could not get their natural killer cells to grow. So the FDA really asked us to show that we could do this consistently consistently. And this is the part you can see on the left when we draw blood from healthy subjects, and on the right when we draw blood from heavily pretreated cancer patients, that we could uh, get their NK cells to grow uh, equally well. And this is something that a lot of companies really have not been able to do and why they have gone straight to an allergenic uh, product. Uh, the next thing is, even if you are able to get uh, NK cells to grow, if you don't make the NK cell inherently stronger, and you just put back in, let's say a million weak NK cells, we would argue that that would not necessarily be biologically active 
uh, for the patient. So you can see uh, above is just when we draw blood from healthy subjects or heavily pretreated subjects, how we're able to get their cells to grow. But down below, uh, the dotted line represents if I was to draw anyone's blood, isolate their resting natural killer cell and plate it at various ratios against the leukemia cell line. If you go all the way to the right at a ratio of 0.5 to one, meaning we took five of somebody's NK cells against 10 leukemia cells, you can see that even when we draw blood from healthy subjects, you don't get much killing. But after we've had a chance to uh, activate and expand NK cells without any genetic modification, you can see that these highly enhanced activated NK cells at the same ratio kill a dramatically more number of cells than the patient's NK cells could beforehand. And we think this is very, very important to have very high natural killer cells that can, with high cytotoxicity, that can really carry out the natural intent of what natural killer cells were um, created to do. Uh, and this is just showing you from our current uh, phase one cancer trial in the United States, that when we drew blood from heavily pretreated cancer patients, you can see how much more powerful we made their natural killer cells uh, compared to the historical donor average uh, when we drew blood from healthy subjects and measured their resting uh, natural killer cells in sort of the activity that I just showed you on the previous slide. But if we can do this for heavily pretreated cancer patients, we uh, believe we can do this for anyone. Uh, the next thing is, unlike uh, T cells, which rely on one receptor and as a result can cause a lot of collateral damage in the human body, uh, our uh, NK cells in all of us have 40 plus receptors, some that are activating, some that are inhibitory, but are, it's these receptors that are almost like a quality control mechanism. So as they pollute, pollute your body, they can, uh, with all these uh, sensitive um, receptors, determine whether or not that cell is normal and should be left alone or whether or not the cell has some disease such as cancer or is virally infected or it's a protein or some inflammatory cell that is causing damage, our NK cells have the ability through all these receptors to seek them out and then destroy them. And again, this is just showing you that when we take blood from healthy subjects on day zero, that many of us have some receptor expression but by the time we're done by with our activation expansion process, not only have we resulted in billions of cells that have very, very high cytotoxicity, but now we've dramatically increased the activating receptor expression so that when these cells are put back into a patient, one, they don't cause any collateral damage because they know to leave normal tissue alone, but they're able to actively seek out those things that shouldn't be in our body and now have the killing potential behind it to then eliminate those cells or things that should not be in our body. Uh, our process entails uh, uh, a peripheral blood draw where we can take uh, as little as 100 milliliters of peripheral blood. We isolate the natural killer cells and through our proprietary expansion activation process, we can produce large numbers of cells and doses and we can freeze multiple doses that can be thawed for subsequent use. Um, so I just wanna at least point out that there are two different processes that people will talk about. Autologous is where we draw blood from the patient and give them back their own cells. Allergenic is where you use a universal donor, whether it be fetal derived cord blood or pluripotent stem cell derived NK cells. And those are given to a patient from that's different than the